to dig deeper into consumer choice. Suppose someone offers you a choice between a beer and three slices of pizza for free and three beers and one slice of pizza also for free. The combination of beer and pizza is called a consumption bundle. You have the choice between two different consumption bundles. One has more pizza and less beer and the other has more beer and less pizza. If you choose the first consumption bundle, one beer and three slices of pizza, you are said to prefer the first consumption bundle to the second. If you choose the second consumption bundle, three beers and one slice of pizza, you are said to prefer the second consumption bundle to the first. Suppose both consumption bundles seem equally good to you. If you believe that both consumption bundles are equally good, economists say that you are indifferent between the bundles. Indifferent doesn't mean that you don't care about the products, it means that the two bundles give you the same amount of happiness. If you prefer the first consumption bundle to the second, it's because you believe the first consumption bundle will give you more utility than the second. Both bundles are free, so cost isn't a factor. If you're indifferent between the bundles, it is because you believe that the bundles will give you the same utility. It so happens that there are an infinite number of consumption bundles among which you are indifferent. Suppose you're offered a consumption bundle which is comprised of six beers and six slices of pizza. We can represent that bundle on a graph by a point that's six units along the pizza axis and six units along the beer axis. Now, assuming that more pizza is better than less pizza, if we hold the amount of beer in your bundle constant at six, but increase the slices of pizza to 10, you're definitely better off than before. Six beers and 10 slices of pizza give you more utility than six beers and six slices of pizza. If we hold the amount of beer in your bundle constant at six and decrease the slices of pizza in your bundle to three, you're definitely worse off than before. Six beers and three slices of pizza give you less utility than six beers and six slices of pizza. Now for the tricky part. Starting from six beers and six slices of pizza, suppose we give you two more beers and take away two slices of pizza. You're left with eight beers and four slices of pizza. Are you better off or not? The answer isn't clear, because while you've gained beer, you've lost pizza. Whether or not you're better off depends on your preferences for beer and pizza. Let's suppose that you are indifferent between the following bundles of beer and pizza. That is, each bundle gives you the same amount of utility. We can plot these bundles on our graph. Notice that the bundles trace out a curve. We call this an indifference curve. It shows all the various bundles of beer and pizza that give you the same utility. By definition, you are indifferent among the bundles that are along this indifference curve. Remember that the concept of indifference is independent of income and prices. If you offer a person at no charge any of the bundles A through E shown here, the person will be indifferent among them. Each of the bundles yields a utility of 10. Suppose we have a bundle that yields more than 10 utility. For example, nine beers and nine slices of pizza. The bundle of nine beers and nine slices of pizza definitely yields more than a utility of 10 because six beers and six pizzas, which is less beer and pizza, yields 10. Suppose the bundle of nine beers and nine slices of pizza yields a utility of 15. We can now talk about all the other bundles that also yield a utility of 15. Now we have two indifference curves. The lower of the two shows all the combinations of beer and pizza that yield a utility of 10. The higher of the two shows all the combinations of beer and pizza that yield a utility of 15. You are indifferent among all of the combinations along the lower curve and are indifferent among all of the combinations along the higher curve. But you prefer any of the combinations on the higher curve to any of the combinations on the lower curve. You have an infinite number of indifference curves. All of the indifference curves taken together are called an indifference map. The shape of the indifference map tells everything there is to know about a person's preferences regarding the two products. The indifference curves are arranged like lines on a topographical map. They never cross. 
On a topographical map, each line represents a different elevation. On an indifference map, each indifference curve represents a different level of utility. The further to the top right of the diagram the indifference curve is, the greater the level of utility it represents. The indifference map describes a person's desires, but says nothing about the person's limitations. In another video, we will look at how to describe a person's limitations using what's known as a budget constraint.